Hi, everyone. I just want to let you know that we are going to give it a couple more minutes to give everybody a chance to join. So if you'll just hold on, and we'll be back with you in a minute. Thanks. Hello? Can you hear me now? Can hear you. So hang on, Ty. We'll go ahead and get started in about another minute. Thanks. Okay. Okay, it's a couple minutes after the hour, so we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to the EDI Warehouse Documents webinar. My name is Siobhan Finders, and I'm the Product Manager for Mapadoc. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to, to attend the webinar. I will re be recording the webinar for future reference and so that you can share it with your teammates. So we have a little bit of housekeeping before I turn the presentation over to Ty. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down for all of us. Any questions can be typed into the chat sections in your GoToWebinar pod on the right side of your screen. Depending on the number of questions that we get during the session, we'll either answer them as we go along or save them for the end. Please feel free to type the questions in as we go along, because if you're like me, you'll forget your question before we get to the end. So a note on your GoToWebinar pod, you'll see that there is a handout over there for you to download. It's a copy of all the slides, so you can take notes as we go along. And then later after the webinar, we're going to send you a thank you note that will contain a link to the recording and a copy of the PDF handout and a link to a short survey. Please take a moment to fill out the survey so we can be sure we're meeting your needs with these webinars. So a little note about Ty. He's very passionate about helping um, customers understand EDI, and sometimes he gets off into the weeds. So if you hear me say, Ty, let's get out of the weeds, it's our code to move on. Helen is going to launch a couple of polls to get some information about you, so please take a moment to respond to the polls. Ready, Helen. Do I need to stop sharing for the polls to come up? No. I can see the poll. Okay. Perfect. So I'll give you about 30 seconds to answer each of the polls. And Ty, if you would let me know when the second poll comes down, that'd be great. Okay.
I think we're here's the second poll. Awesome, thanks. Okay, I think that's done. Thank you very much. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the webinar, and I'd like to introduce Ty Knutson, one of our senior consultants. Ty will be presenting today, so take it away, Ty. My name is Ty Edward Knutson. I've been doing EDI for since 1996. Um, when I started, I didn't know what EDI was and had to learn it by by doing it. Today we're going to talk about EDI warehouse documents and <clears throat> what that means. Um, what is EDI? What is the third party logistics or 3PL? What are warehouse documents, the document flow, and there's other things that go along with it. And then we have questions. So, so what is EDI? Um, EDI is electronic data interchange. It's, it's an electronic communication method which allows trading partners to exchange documents, such as orders, purchase orders, invoices, advance ship notices, there's other documents, and these go between the suppliers and the manufacturers. EDI is also used by third-party logistics providers, 3PLs, for communicating communication between the warehouse and the supplier. And these transaction sets are structured documents containing data segments and elements utilizing agreed upon standards and versions. And that there is key because it has to be agreed upon. And the documents are traded all over the world. So these documents go back and forth between suppliers and warehouses. And what's a 3PL? Um, 3PL really means a third-party logistics provider. The, the definition, I think it's a good definition. Logistics is the part of the supply chain management that plans, implements, and controls the efficient, effective forward and reverse flow of, and storage of goods, services, and related information between the point of origin and the point of consumption in order to meet the consumer's requirements or the customer's requirements. I know that was a mouthful, but basically a, a third party warehouse is, is it's just that. Either, either you can have a warehouse and that's all it is, or you can have a warehouse that packs and ships your goods, or you can have a warehouse that does all the uh, logistics, everything involved. Next. And what are those warehouse documents? Um, warehouse documents are used by suppliers and 3PLs to communicate the status of shipments between various sites, such as the manufacturer's plant and the offsite warehouses. So in other words, those documents go back and forth between the manufacturer and the warehouse where their items are being stored. These document sets are critical to suppliers so that they know how much inventory they have or what's on hand in which warehouse. So the common documents that are used, these warehouse documents, are the 940, which is a warehouse shipping order, a 945, which is a warehouse shipping advice, a 943, which is a warehouse stock transfer shipment advice, that's a mouthful, and the 944 is a warehouse stock transfer receipt advice. Um, well, the 850 purchase order isn't part of the warehouse quote unquote documents. That's a starting point of everything. That's where the cycle begins. So we start here. So the trading partner sends us a purchase order and we get it. The, we send a, a PO acknowledgement, which is an 855 document. Then we ship the document. You like how that truck moves? 
we ship the document and we send an advance ship notice and the advance ship notice needs to get there before the truck does. And then the, 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 the trading partner sends a functional acknowledgement, which is a 997. The difference between a functional acknowledgement and a PO acknowledgement is a 997 just acknowledges the fact that a document went back and forth and the PO acknowledgement acknowledges the details in the particular purchase order. So the next one. So then once we ship it, once we get the acknowledgement back from the trading partner, we send an invoice to the trading partner. Is there another one? They send another functional acknowledgement for that invoice, just saying that they received that invoice. And then the flow of the whole thing, the whole enchilada. So purchase order to the supplier, 855, acknowledging the purchase order. There's a, these are, these are the warehouse side of documents. So, so from the supplier, I'm going, going to send a 943 to, which is a warehouse stock transfer shipment advice. Basically I'm sending Stuff that we manufactured, putting it into a warehouse, and that's the 3PL. The 943 sends that information to the 3PL, telling what what you're sending, quantities, and all of that stuff. Then they send back a 944, which is a warehouse stock transfer receipt, saying that they received X number of these things, and it's in their warehouse, and it's ready to ship. That's the that's. Well, I'm sorry, the 940 is the first one, the 940, then the 943, the 944, and then there's one more. Uh, so the nine, okay, I, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. We got the 943, the 944, then the 940 is next. So the 940 is a purchase order, essentially is a copy of the purchase order that you're that you got from your trading partner and you're sending that to the 3PL that's what a 940 is it's a warehouse shipping order and then they ship that thing to the trading partner and send you back a 945 and 945 is a warehouse shipping advice that tells tracking numbers and tells carton IDs and those kinds of things that are on the labels so that you can either they can send the ASN some some 3PLs do the ASN or in-house you would get all of the data from the 945 and produce the ASN for yourself and send it directly to the trading partner. And again that ASN has to get there before that truck gets there otherwise you get lots of chargebacks and I'm sure some of you know what that's about. Then once the ASN was shipped and the shipment gets there we send the invoice well, once the ASN is sent, we send the invoice and then they send the 997 back to us and hopefully they pay us for what we sent to them. So what is an outbound warehouse shipping shipping order? The, the EDI 940 is a warehouse transaction set used to instruct remote warehouses to ship orders. In other words, it's a purchase order that you're sending to them, tells them what to ship, where to ship it to, when to ship it, and those, that, those kinds of things. It's commonly used by suppliers such as a manufacturer or a wholesaler to authorize the warehouse to make a shipment to a buyer, such as a retailer. A 940 may also be used to confirm a shipment, modify a shipment, or cancel a previous ship order or previously. So the 940 is also um, it's a, an essential instruction for the warehouse on what to ship, how to ship, and when to ship. And this is a look at the actual EDI of a 940. This is the header information. You've got ship to information there, ship from information, and the warehouse that you're shipping it from. So that's, that's the header information. The next one is going to be the detail. This actually shows the what items, the quantities, the any, like if there's UPCs and data that goes with that. And so this is what a 940 looks like. The next slide. This is the whole thing all together from start to finish. So you can see the header there and then the detail. And in this case, there's three containers that they shipped and or three three line items that they that they want shipped. 
So the next one, I believe, goes into the 945, which is the inbound warehouse shipping advice. So the warehouse gets your 940, they process that order, they box the order depending on your agreement with them, and then they stick a label on it, and then they create a 945. The 945 is a warehouse transaction set that provides confirmation of a shipment and is returned to the supplier by the warehouse once the order has been shipped. 945 provides information needed for the seller to reconcile the quantity shipped against the order, ordered quantities and to create an invoice and generate an ASN, which is an advanced ship notice, an 856. So this is what a 945 looks like. This is both header and detail. Um, this one, this particular 945, if you look at about halfway down, there's a man segment. That man segment has, in this case, an AA qualifier is the carton ID, and the CP qualifier is the tracking number. So in this case, it looks like the tracking number is the same for all of those, and those are the carton IDs that go along with that. So next slide. In this particular case, there are no tracking numbers in that man segment. But we're using, if you look at the N9 segment, which is about a third of the way down, there's an N9CN with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is the tracking number. And that would, so on your ASN, it's either going to be the tracking number or a, or a pro number generally to indicate, you know, that that's the carrier's information. Next. So here's the flow. We send the 940 to the warehouse, which is the warehouse shipping order. We get the 945, the warehouse shipping advice back from them. Um, we get, we either the warehouse sends the ASN or we send the ASN, depending on how, or how that's all set up. Next one. So either we send the ASN or the, the, the 3 pl sends the ASN. Then they send back their functional acknowledgments and so forth. The other documents that go along with the, the 943 and the 944 are, are here. This is the, and this is a mouthful. It took me a while to be able to say this without stumbling over it. The outbound warehouse stock transfer shipment advice is the 943. And the 943, warehouse stock transfer shipment advice transaction set is an it's a, basically an advanced ship notice to a remote warehouse that a transfer shipment has been made from the manufacturer in other words i'm telling you know we manufactured something we're going to ship it to the warehouse we're just telling the warehouse that we're shipping it to them how many to expect and so forth um it may also be used by manufacturers to utilize the warehouse to accept returns from a customer. So a customer would send in a return and this would, the, the 943 would typically provide the receiving location with detailed information regarding the product being shipped back. So the next one, this is what raw EDI for a 943 looks like. So you got your header up there, your N1s are the ship twos, and then you've got your, your um, items down in the WO4 segment. Next. So the 944, the inbound warehouse stock transfer advice, that is a transaction set, is a, it's an acknowledgement to the manufacturer or the supplier that the transfer shipment has been received by the 3PL. So all they're saying is we received whatever they received and send it back to you. And then you reconcile between what they received and what you shipped. And hopefully the two numbers are the same. And this is what it looks like. So we send the 943 to the, the warehouse stock transfer shipment advice. They send a 944 warehouse stock transfer receipt. Then that that stock gets shipped to the 3PL. Now, the next part, so then, once the 940, 
and 945. 940 is sent to the 3PL. The 945 comes back from the 3PL. We create an AFN. In the AFN, the AFN, the advanced ship notice, the overview of an advanced ship notice, it provides the trading part with shipment dates, with contain, contents, on, you know, what's in the advanced ship notice, and it's to send it to the trading partner. It allows the trading partner to receive shipments quickly and accurately. So when Walmart is standing on their dock and they scan that barcode, it should pull up an ASN. They can they know what purchase order it is and everything that goes along with it, and then they can, without m losing a beat, turn around. They know where it goes. They send it on down the road to wherever it goes. But if they don't have this information, that there's a big roadblock. Um, the the level of detail depends on the trading partner's requirements. Some trading partners don't even care about tracking numbers, and some care about every tracking tracking number. Um, used in conjunction with the Serial Shipping Container Code, the SFCC code, commonly known as a UCC-128 number or UCC-128 barcode number, that number gets on the label and it identifies. So when, when Walmart scans that label, that number points to that exact ASN. That's how all this stuff kind of ties together. And that number came out of the 940 five from the 3PL. So the 3PL is the one that gave that label that number. They send it back through these documents. It goes in and creates the ASN, sends it out to Walmart, and when they scan it, it all works. Um, it's using, so it facilitates automating what we just went through. And really, it's time sensitive. If you send a shipment to Walmart and your shipment gets there before the ASN, that's where chargebacks come. So next. Um, so the content of an ASN, we have shipment order tear pack item. So there's a shipment level, there's an order level. A tear is for the pallet, a pack is for the carton, and an item is obviously the item information. The One of the most common ASNs that we send, and I well, okay. Can we go to the next slide? There's two types of ASNs. Um, there's a standard pack and there's a pick and pack. We can actually do both of those, but the standard pack, um, it's if you have everything in cartons. I, I only ship in six of these things in a carton. That's a standard pack. It's a shipment order item pack format. A pick and pack in is where they go and they put item one, item two, item three in a carton. That carton's full, they go to item four, five, and six, put that in a carton and move on to the next one. That's pick and pack. And that one's done with shipment order pack item. So that's the one that we're commonly using and that's the one that we're showing in this demonstration. The so next. Next slide, yeah. This is the ASN, this is the header level of the ASN. It also includes the the some details. So you can you can look at there's in there's an HL, the first HL level, it's about five or six lines down, that's the shipment. The next HL level is about halfway down, that's the order. Then then a couple of lines down from that is the pack and then the item. Well in the pack you can see the man segments, that's where the man GM, that's that UCC 128 or the SF CC number. The MAN CP is the tracking number. So that's looking at the detail of the ASN. So this is a shipment order pack item ASN. Next slide. Next slide, Shimon. It is not moving for me. Hang on a sec. Okay, no problem. There we go. So this is just, just more of that same ASN. I think there's one more slide showing the, the last part of that ASN. Shows the details of the ASN. In this particular case, there's a couple of different ASNs in this one particular file. So next slide. 
and that's the bottom end and the the ending the ctt is the end of the asn and those are envelope things at the bottom without going into too much detail next so this is this is an asn that is the whole thing um it was just the whole from start to finish all in one the, an asn can be that simple that's an asn it shows that it sent two items it they don't even have tracking information they have a, they have a refcn which is your pro number and a bill of lading so that's the example of how simple an asn can look um most trading partners um, that require the ASIN also require the SSCC number, the serial shipping container code label on each on each carton. That label gets that number. That number goes in. Um, the label includes a unique number to identify a specific logistics unit. In that in that number is a manufacturer ID, and that is unique to each manufacturer. And um, this is all through standards, the ISO standards and, and that kind of thing. But a pallet has a pallet, a case, a trailer, all those different things have numbers and all those different things have places in the, in the 940, 945, I mean, in the 945 and in the ASN. Next slide. So this is kind of the overview. You get a purchase order from the trading partner. You send a purchase order acknowledgement in 855 back to the trading partner. You send a 943 to your 3PL telling them you're going to send them a shipment. They send the 944 back warehouse stock transfer receipt saying that they got what you sent to them. You send a 940 with the actual purchase order information to get back a 945 and then from that 945 either the 3PL or you create the ASN and then once the ASN is in shipment and all that you send the invoice and then you get paid I think the invoice is the last piece of that there's the invoice and then um that those are the warehouse documents. There is a document that goes with it that I will touch on. This is the request for routing instruction. Somebody like JC Penney requires a load ID. And instead of sending, you know, 400 orders or or having to type in that load ID 400 times, you can send a 753 which basically puts together a shipment and sends them all the weights, all the quantities, all the pack all when it's ready to pick up and where it's going to be picked up and all of those things um you send that 753 to to the to the trading partner like jc penny they send back a 754. i think that's the next slide is the 754. well this is what a 753 looks like in the raw edi but and then the next one should be the 754. this is what a 754 looks like in raw edi and this file is not is is a different kind of edi but the 754 brings back the the it's used to bring from for the buyer to communicate specific routing instructions the the load ID the ship twos when they're going to pick it up if it's a multi stop pickup all that kind of stuff comes back in a 945 I mean it's 754 754 and it's used as a response to the 753 typically it's used by buyers the buyers organization. It's taken control. It, it tells when they're going to take control of that shipment and all of that. And who, whose cost? Where does that cost land? You know, who owns it at what point? Those kinds of things. So I think that's it. I'm not sure if there's another slide. Well, a functional acknowledgement. It, you know, we talked about it. A functional acknowledgement is just acknowledging that a document was sent through the value-added network. That's a 997. Um, it doesn't indicate acceptance or reject rejection of the actual data. All it says is that a document went back and forth. And that's what, what when, in this case, the AK9 with an A, that was accepted. All it's saying is that that 
purchase order document was accepted. That's what a 997 does. There's 946, the delivery information message. A delivery information message, 946 transaction set, can be used by the warehouse to advise the supplier that a transfer shipment has been received. Now, it, it provides the supplier with detailed information containing products that, you know, product that they have received, containing the product information for what they got. That's what a 946 does. 947, warehouse inventory adjustment advice. Um, that is to inform the warehouse or the supplier of quantity or status change of inventory records. So when they do, I think probably when they do an inventory, they have to adjust. This would probably provide where that can be adjusted. Um, Detailed information concerning the internal adjustments, so when you do inventory, occurs between the, the warehouse and the supplier. So now we're at the Q&A. So Shaman, I'll let you handle the Q&A. Thanks, Ty. And we went through that fairly quickly. Um, we have no questions typed into the chat box. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box in the lower right corner of your screen. Um, and we can go ahead and get them answered. Also, uh, on the screen right now is contact information. So if you want to reach out to product management, which is me, this is my email address, siobhan.cinders at mapadoc.com. So make sure you look at the screen because it's not spelled how you think it is. Uh, if you need some support, reach out to support at mapadoc.com. If you want to talk to Bill, you reach out to sales at mapadoc.com. And I would encourage you as well to check out the Mapadoc blog. It's at www.mapadoc.com. And if you select the menu option in the top right corner and choose the blog link, uh, you, there's lots of EDI information out there. There's information on what's new and the different uh, flavors of Mapadoc and what we have out there. Uh, and I encourage you to go out there and take a look at that. You can also leave comments if you like. So, hey, Shabon, we do have a couple questions that came in through the questions field. Okay. Um, so I'll just read them out to you, and then you can verbally answer them. Does that work? That works. Okay, so the first one we have is someone who's been asking for the 943-944 documents in MapaDoc for several years, but was told that there isn't one developed for MapaDoc yet um, in order to implement their company they would have to uh, bear development costs. Is that still the case since we're presenting these as warehouse documents in the presentation? And it depends on what uh, flavor of Mapadoc are you using? What Sage product are you using? So I, I okay. know that we have the 943, 944 for Sage X3. I, we do not have it for Sage 100. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll give you this person's contact information at the end so that you guys can Perfect. take this offline. Perfect, thank you. A uh, second question from the same person is, will the receipt of 944 be automated via MapaDoc so that the receipt of the 944 will trigger a receipt of goods in the PO module and also add the inventory to the GL? Uh, and again, the, the same answer applies. It depends on what version of, of Sage you're running. And, and like you said, Helen, if you send me that contact information, we'll reach out and have a conversation. Okay. They have a couple more questions, so let's um, let's do that then, because it sounds like it, they're all related to the 944, 945, and they sound okay. like very specific questions. So um, I will send you the questions over. That way you're prepared when you reach out to them, okay? Perfect. Thank you. Um, and then a few more questions. Um, when will these transaction sets be available for Acumatica customers? So right now we are getting ready, we're working on the 855 and we are getting ready to start work on the 940, 945. So I would say sometime next year in 2020 that they'll be available for Acumatica. Okay, um, another question. Are there any standard codes in the header that are consistent um, i.e. N1 to N4, explain the lines in the EDI coding. So Ty, can you answer that question? Well, sure, or, I mean, if, so 940 or 945? So 
So do, we, do you want to just go back to the EDI of the 940 and start there, since that's the starting place? Um, <laughs> I have to go through the whole enchilada a couple times. <laughs> yeah. So that's 943. Uh, okay, so we wanted to go back go, to the back. 940. Go back to the 945. Go to the 940 first, and then we'll go to the 945. Okay. So the 940, so, so basically what I'm seeing here, um, W05, so the N1 segment is your N1ST is shipped to, and so that would tell it where this thing's going to ship to with the ship to code there. N103 is your address. N104 is your city, state, and zip. N1DE um, depends on what the trading partner calls DE. Could be, it could be the manufacturer. I don't know. N1WH would be the warehouse that it's actually shipping from. So I would assume that N1WH is the actual 3PL. I mean, just looking at this EDI. Um, was that the detail you were looking for? And we can also, if you send over the contact information, we can reach out directly um, and answer those questions as well. Absolutely. And then, you know, I'm uh, be specific, you know, because I deal with specifics, you know, what specifically are you looking for? Right. This, and, and we yeah. can have that conversation on the phone. Perfect. Okay. And then lastly, um, you will also need to reach out to this person to provide more details, but they requested information for Stage 100C. Uh, more specifically, what documents can be mapped through Mapadoc. So I will let you guys reach out to that person to provide um, them with more information and more details. Okay, we'll definitely do that. Any other questions? That's it for now. Um, it doesn't look like anything else has come in. I will be sure to give you guys a full download of all the questions that came in so you can reach out to the appropriate contacts. Great, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for taking the time to attend the webinar today. And any further questions, if I would, I'll hit the escape bar and we'll make a quick and easy route back to the um, contact information. You can be sure oh, that helped a lot. <laughs> Sorry. OK, we'll just leave it there. Um, go ahead and reach out to me, and I'll make sure that we get the right person on the phone to answer any questions you might have. So thank you again. And have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Us.